This is a tier list video to decide who is the best MMA content creator of 2022. I have all of your favorite MMA YouTubers hidden around the perimeter of the screen, and I'll slowly reveal them one by one as the video goes on and place them where they belong on the screen. There's only room for one in S tier, and that is the best MMA content creator of 2022. And other than that, A tier is the best, D tier is the worst. I'll save S tier till last. So it makes it a little bit more interesting to the to the winner being crowned at the end of the video. But yeah, I'm going to rank them where they belong, describe who they are as the video goes on, and critique them heavily as well. So let's lose some friends. Let's make some people angry. If you are an MMA content creator mentioned in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below and uh, insult me a little bit for what I've said about you and give me your thoughts. Let's get straight into it, okay? This is going to be a good one. I'm almost nervous to begin. Okay, we're going to start straight away with plucking someone out from, we've got ITP MMA from the left-hand side of the screen, okay? And I'm going to put ITP MMA in B tier is where I'm going to put him. I believe he does a very good job of montages on YouTube, okay? Is his channel entirely based on and solely existing based on the UFC's owned content? Yes, okay, so that does make it impossible for me to put him at A tier or S tier. Get some originality, you know what I'm saying? But he is quite original, okay? He's the leading guy for these MMA compilations on YouTube at the moment, breaking down things like, you know, last second finishes, and he keeps it relevant with the times as well. So if something goes on with, like, Doug Crosby, the, the judge, he'll make a video of all of his decisions. So he's quite relevant, he's up to date, he's hip with the times of MMA, and uh, he's also demonetized at the moment, I know, so he makes content to no money coming his way, which is respectable, so I'm putting him at B tier, but yeah, there's only so high I can go with just taking the UFC's content, you know what I'm saying, do a bit more, be better, we move on to someone else on this tier list who's gonna be, oh my word, it's Michael Bisping, <sighs> the hypocrite Cyclops himself. I'm putting him at C tier, okay? Now, I respect Michael Bisping. I've got another channel of Michael Bisping's that's going to score a little bit higher on this tier list, but I'm going to say it just how it is. Some of these UFC fighters turned YouTubers, okay? They're lacking that flavor. They're lacking the spice. They ain't making the tier list videos, on MMA content creators. They pretend other MMA content creators don't exist. Okay? They're just giving it the, the basic transcripts that's been written down that we all kind of know. Like, I could tell word for word all of the takes that Bisping's gonna have in a reaction video of his before he's even made it. It's just, it's too simple. Okay? I want an MMA guru raging at Dagestani fighters. I want some flavor, something out of left field that you don't expect that all of a sudden has you hooked on what someone's saying. You know what I mean? But Michael Bisping just goes, you know, the wrestling was good. Oh, great striking from him. Close decision. Uh, that's how it goes. Moving on. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, it's, there's no flavor there. There's no seasoning there, in my opinion. So, the Cyclops goes at C tier. For Cyclops, of course. See for Cyclops. We move on to another person that we're going to break down, which is Henry Cejudo. You know what? I'm going to put Triple C at B. I am. I think that Triple C, and, and I wasn't going to put him at B. I was going to put Henry Cejudo at C tier. I'll be honest with you guys. But then I remembered. I respect the videos that he has been making with Demetrius Johnson because that is, it's a shock that he's kind of the first guy to ever do it, really, the way he's done it. Him and Demetrius Johnson sitting down watching their fight back together was one of the best videos a former fighter has maybe ever made. I love it, in all honesty. So it's brought him up to beat here, okay? Is he a bit, like, hit and miss with certain things? But he's an active fighter, so he's not going to have the input into his YouTube channel to get to A tier or potentially even take the top spot at S tier either. So it's not his full-time job. But for a guy not doing a full-time job, 
He puts a lot of effort into his videos. We get some really cool uh, footage. I remember the only reason we got to see Ali Abdulaziz break down in tears after seeing Usman get KO'd was because of Cejudo's YouTube channel. That, that needs to be mentioned. So I'm going to give Henry Cejudo his credit. He's going to be put at B tier. We move on to someone else who's it, who is. <laughs> oh, we're getting straight into it. Do I need to move this? I don't need to. Well, maybe over to the left a little bit. We're, but we're putting this at D tier. I'll be honest. Now, have I just blown a connection? Because I'll never be on Food Truck Diaries. Oh, damn. You know? Never to be seen on Food Truck Diaries, the MMA guru. You heard it here first. Thick Boy Studios. First of all, the name is limiting it to D tier anyway because we're not 12. You know what I mean? We can do away with the thick boy stuff. I do enjoy food uh, food truck diaries. Now, is that because there's this weird thing where I just like seeing fighters receive a pair of shoes? Maybe, to be honest with you, because the interviewing skills aren't quite there. The problem I have with Brendan Schaub is it's like the MMA audience that he garners for his channel is his way into mainstream pop culture. Do you understand what I'm saying here? He has his MMA channel with the MMA fans that are like, you know, extra, extra inclined of chromosomes to even watch it consistently. I don't know how he has a fan base, but he does somehow. So people do watch his videos still. And um, I feel like he uses that to get the connections that he wants because he's got a bit of a platform going on now. But I will say I don't like the fight companions. I like him having some fighters on and he's got the connections. You know what I mean? He's he's good at getting the connections and getting different people on the show and stuff like that. But they just end up rambling about Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson. Great guy. Never met him. Like it's just it's just it's, there's only so much I can take. Food Truck Diaries is a good concept and idea, though. I do respect that. But the podcast that he has, this guy ain't paying attention anymore, man. He just ain't paying attention. And I can tell his predictions every time. All he's going to do is predict the more popular fighter, that it will do better for him if he can have them on the show. He is very hell-bent on keeping good connections and relationships with big-name fighters. Um... So he's just going to pick the more popular guy every single time and side with the more popular guy. He sided with Pimlet against Helwani. I know he has beef with Helwani, but still. Like, you know, he, he's just going to side with things. It's just, it's just, I can see it coming. Popularity over realness. We move on to something else, which is another channel on YouTube. Give me a second here to find it. Here it is. The weekly scraps with Aljamain Sterling. You know what? I'm putting it at C tier because he's trying. God bless him. He's trying and he is a, f a current bantamweight world champion. My bitch. As we all know, we've seen the video saga between us. My bitch. You know, you know what I'm saying? Apologized to the great MMA guru for disrespecting me and speaking my name out of turn. But that's, that's a good thing that he's able to acknowledge. My bitch. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes you have to... No, I'm joking. But, Bantamweight World Champion. Current. Still doing his YouTube thing. Respect. Doing more YouTube thing than some of the other people that I'm going to give a real talking to on this list that are in the MMA sphere. Okay? Because we we got a lot of people on this list. There's a lot more people to go. This might be a 40-minute video. Doing a bit more effort than a lot of people are. So, I respect Aljamain Sterling. Is it dull and boring and not really my thing? Yes. Okay, is it more centered around him and not really the MMA? It's just how he applies to MMA and stories involving him. And yes, but I respect that he's doing it, putting the effort in whilst being a bantamweight world champion. He's at C tier. We move on to someone else on the list. You know what I mean? Ariel Hawane. You know what? Let's discuss Ariel Hawane real quick. I'm putting him at A tier. Okay, I think that Ariel Hawane has gone above and beyond this year. I am going to give him credit for that. There is a worry in my brain, though. And here is where I will insult him just a little bit. I think there's... I, I, I watched the Dylan Dennis interview, and I thought it was one of the best MMA interviews I've ever heard in my life. 
But there was a couple of times in that interview where I was thinking, who the fuck does Ariel think he is, dude? This going to his head a little bit, okay? Like, there's there's winning internet dramas with Brendan Schaub and Paddy Pimlet. If you want to take that and, and make yourself feel real clever about outwitting Brendan Schaub in an internet drama, be my guest, Ariel Hawane, okay? If you think that makes you a, a genius, okay, a Mr. Big Dog, fair enough for outwitting Brendan Schaub. You know, you take the crown. But there were some times where he was snapping at Dylan Dennis where I was thinking, dude, Dennis can destroy you in a real, like, you need to be, you're lucky this is Dylan Dennis and he's trolling right now. You know what I mean? Because Ariel was piping up a little bit and I was thinking to myself, dude, do you not, do you not realize that you're a string bean pathetic excuse of a man right now? Like, you could get really destroyed by Dylan Dennis here. Okay? So Ariel Hawani's going to A tier. Great interviews this year. Eh, he panders, but he's been doing some good stuff outside of the interviews that I like to see. So I hope by putting him at A tier, this will get more of like an Ariel Hawani personality segment out of it. You know what I mean? Where we get more of the the deep dives into the MMA world and the hot takes outside of just interviewing fighters every single month, every single week, multiple times a week. But he's a, a key cornerstone of the MMA world. So I'm putting him at A tier. We move on. To someone else who is. Keon Kimura. What do I want to do with Keon Kimura? The lisp. I mean, uh, there is a lisp. And it is a problem. But I respect him choosing to speak for a career whilst having a lisp. There's, there's some kind of like admiration I have for him because of that. I've just sent dust flying everywhere. There's, there's admiration I have for him because of that. Dude has a lisp and he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to speak for a living. You know what I mean? That's what he said. So I respect that. That's some hustling mindset right there. And I respect and admire him for it. But um, he does make good content. Um, he used to make the how good was this guy really videos. If you know about that, that's what really sort of got him the following that he has and blew up his channel massively. But um, now he just covers the sport, gives opinions on things, give, uh, gives predictions as well. So Keon Kimura, you can be at B tier. Not quite at the top of B tier, but you're there anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'd say ITP's at the top of B tier. We move on to something else, which is... Oh God, who's next? Sean O'Malley. Okay, this one's going to be interesting because, um, you know, me and Sean O'Malley have some beef. You know what I'm saying? We have some beef, but I'm going to be real with where I'm going to put Sean O'Malley. I, again, respect that he is a number one bantam. I'm putting him at C tier. He's a number one bantamweight in the world, whether you agree with the decision or not, or agree with his constant cheating and cage grabbing or not. Um, but he's a number one bantamweight in the world, and he's still doing all of his YouTube stuff as well. More than some people on this list. And I'm going to get to them in a second. You know who you are. But I respect it. Okay? Sean O'Malley's respectable. Puts in a lot of work onto his YouTube. The reason why I'm putting him at C tier though. And the problem that I have with Sean O'Malley. Is that he doesn't even really know a lot about MMA. He doesn't really. Like. They'll be like. He sort of uses again the MMA audience to just sell himself. It's not about the MMA. I'm, I feel like I'm like the MMA gatekeeper of YouTube right now. But it's not about the pure essence of MMA with him. Like, it's just like, hey, uh, his brother on his show or Tim Welch will say, what do you think of the fights this weekend? And he was like, yeah, I didn't even watch him. So what are we doing watching the fucking show then? Of you breaking down the fights with it in your title? Hmm? Yeah, I didn't even watch the fights. Was it good? Oh, it was good. Cool. Anyway, move on. Anyway, me, Brendan, and Schmitty, you know what I mean? That's, it's the anyway, me, Brendan, and Schmitty show with Sean O'Malley sometimes. Anyways, uh, you know, uh, me and Dana, or Danny, sorry, his girlfriend's name. Like, it's just, it, anyway, me, me, Brendan, and Schmitty, did you hear about that? Okay, well, well, the MMA Cannoneer versus Strickland card reaction is in the title here, Sean. Um, yeah, I didn't even watch it. Uh, me, Brendan, and Schmitty, though, uh... We went, uh, we went partying, you know? Okay, cool. Well, let's put that in the title and see how many views it gets. How about that? You scrawny fucking battle droid looking fucking. 
It's all good, though. No, no hard feelings between me and O'Malley. <laughs> we move on to someone else. Who is? Oh, my word! Baby boy! It's Believe You Me with Michael Bisping. It was at C tier before. It's now at B tier because as much as Anthony Smith could not beat Andrew Tate in a street fight just using jujitsu if Andrew Tate had a knife, you idiots. Do you not understand how knives work? You moron. I'm from London. I know how they work. Anthony Smith has increased the level of the show because he pays attention. He does his research. He speaks very eloquently. I respect what he's taken the show to. And I will say this. They get good interviews out of fighters as well. So believe you me, B tier is like, this is good content that you should be consuming on at least a now and again basis, in my opinion. And believe you me, is hit B tier, I reckon, okay? A tier is like a must watch, you gotta pay attention. S tier is like the god. I mean, I don't know who's gonna be at S tier, sorry. Fuck, I ruined it. Um... B tier is like, you got to watch him now and again, because it's good content. So when they have fighters on, it's usually a good interview. And I respect Bisping, so I'm going to I'm gonna be lenient and give him B tier here, because he called out Pimlet, and he said he thought Pimlet lost. And I never expected him to. I was, I was thinking he was going to say, close fights aren't robberies. I have one eye, trust me, I know what I'm seeing. You know what I mean? So Michael Bisping, Believe You Me podcast, good production value, consistent every week. Anthony Smith's added a bit of value to it outside of thinking that he can beat Andrew Tate with just jujitsu if Andrew Tate has a knife. One, it's Tate. Two, he has a knife. Three, you couldn't even beat a home invader with jujitsu. It took you like half hour. So, you know what I mean? He didn't have a knife. If he did, might not be seeing Anthony Smith on Believe You Me, is all I'm going to say. Either way, on paper, he wins. We move on to someone else who is. Oh, Chael. I'm. Oh, it's sad. You know what? I can't defend him anymore. I, I don't watch Chael anymore. I'll be honest with you guys. Maybe you do. And he does get views. So, like, people are watching Chael Sonnen. I, I don't watch him anymore. I, I can't. Like, he's high up on C tier. Don't get me wrong. You know what? Maybe I'm going to do this. Maybe I'm going to put him over here at C tier, but... I don't watch him anymore. I can't. I, I can't listen to Chael. Ramble on about nonsense. Mispronounce everyone's name. Not even know things that are going on. Like, in the sport. Like, he he just, like, wings it. He's a professional, like, he just wings it. He flukes the whole, he flukes his way through a video, pretty much. Like, you're like, oh my god, is he going to pronounce a name right? Does he even know this fight has been made before he matches this guy up with someone else? Like, it's just... I, I love him because he's Chael and I'd never put him at D tier, but I can't watch anymore. As I know, maybe I ha- maybe you have to be like not paying as much attention to watch Chael Sonnen's videos, but you just don't pay attention anymore. They're, they're, he'll have some takes on things, yeah, and I'm like, dude, did you watch the fight? Like, what are you even saying right now? You know? There's the punches and the kicks and, you know, and I'm like, well, okay, the punches and the kicks. What What, what else, Chael? You know what I mean? What, what's your next hot take about this fight? Any any really spe- specific information to make it clear you've watched it? And he just dances around and... Every fight, there's a leader of the dance, okay? And it's just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, you maybe didn't watch it. I don't know if you watch... There's, there's literally moments where Chael will react to a fight and give his reaction to a fight, and I'm not sure he's watched it, okay? But he, like, makes it vague enough to guess his way through it. I, I don't know. It's weird. But I'm putting Chael at C tier. Respect. Other. Piss off a gangster. We move on. To someone else who is. Morning combat. Oh. I'll put it at B tier. Because. Oh. Sure, yeah, you liberal. You lefty cunt. It's all good though. Um. Morning Combat. Uh, They put high production value on. I'm going to encompass Luke Thomas in this as well. Like, just his own thing. Um, Because I've only got so many spaces on this video. But Morning Combat, you know. Yeah, go on. Put them at VT. You know, they put effort in. They've got a very high production value. Um, They they do a show. It's consistent. 
they got some good takes. You got to watch them now and again. Uh, occasionally, Luke will really put a lot of effort into a video, and you'll respect the amount the amount of effort that he's put into a breakdown. They get good interviews as well. I like when he uh, talks about the CKB fighters. Like he gives Volkanovski a lot of credit when a lot of people didn't. So I respect him on that. But what I will say is, I just don't. BC's kind of funny, but just Luke. It, it, you know what it feels like. This your dad's favorite MMA show. And I'm just out of the loop with a lot of the references, jokes. Like, I just, I don't find them funny. You know what I mean? So that's stopping it from A tier. It's very low on B tier for me. But I respect it enough in terms of the content level of production to where I'm not going to put it at C tier. Um, but yeah, go on. I'll put it at B tier, you know? Like, Morning Combat, it just... It's your granddad's favorite MMA show. You know what I mean? It's just, it's it's for the 40-year-old MMA fan. And if you're 40 years of age, knock your, you know, go listen to the, the references on there. Like, I, I just can't get into it. But we'll move on straight away before I say anything too damning. Um, boom. DC and RC. Ah, putting it at C tier. Putting it at C tier. Um, both their surnames start with it. So that's where it belongs. In C tier. Um... RC Dano, he he kind of follows the sport. I've just never got into it. I've never got into DC and RC, so I've stopped watching it. Unless they have like a a fighter on, like a like an important fighter where I'm actually interested in DC. I just think DC is so he, he needs to be used better than with RC. You know what I mean? Like Ryan Clark, I think his name is. Um, he needs to be used with someone better than him. And I think that would do really, really well. Like, DC, and this is maybe why I'm not going to trash it too much, is really good. Like, he's a great personality. He's got jokes. He's funny. And I, I saw him do something with uh, Ben Askren recently. And DC and Funky would be a better show. I really do think so. I just, I get what they're trying to do. But as an, a pure MMA fan that don't really care about the NFL, they're basically, they're trying to get regular ESPN viewers that watch N for NFL and NBA and stuff like that who who are more mainstream American sport fans to pay attention to MMA through bringing eyes with the use of RC. But I just don't know what he brings to it. Like, I, he's put in more effort as time's gone on and him being... But I, I feel like him being hired for the show started his MMA fandom. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's almost learned about MMA through being on an MMA analyst show. Which is, uh, that's, I'll leave that statement as it is to explain why it's at C tier. We move on to something else, which is. Hey, Gabrielle. We're going to put this at B tier. Ah, oh, Jesse on fire. I respect Jesse on fire. I trash him a bit because I, I just think he's a funny little character. Uh, I don't know. I just think he's a funny character. I like the world because they've got different characters in it. And it's just, there's something about Jesse on fire that just makes me want to impersonate him, you know? Hey, Gabrielle, did you hear about Wonder Woman empowering females across America? <laughs> Lame, right? Like, he's just a, he's a funny little goblin, a funny little uh, character of a guy. And I, I like the characters of the world. So I, I'm almost inclined to dismiss him. As an intellectual. I don't know why. It's just something about Jesse on fire. I just look at him and it makes me want to chuckle. Um, funny little man. But, uh, yeah. I mean, just look at what he thinks he looks like. And <laughs> this, is, this is his thumbnail. This is his uh, icon of who he is. You know what I mean? With his real title on. You know? Yeah, this is me. And then you look at him and it's just like, oh, God. But yeah, funny Jesse on fire. I, I I respect the effort that he puts into videos at least. Do I think he's he's gonna go far because he's worming his way around and he's gonna be on JRE. That's what I reckon. Okay, that's something I can predict for you. Jesse on fire, even if he isn't the best MMA analyst or YouTube channel, he's got the mind to where he'll find his way on JRE. That and that's his main goal, I feel like. It's almost like the MMA channels just to get there. Okay? So I respect his mindset. He makes good videos. He puts effort in. He does his research. You know what I mean? He finds stories. Does he ramble on a bit much about nonsense? Like, like can an 11-minute video of his be 
Can a 40-minute video of his be 11 minutes? It could be. But, you know, Jesse on fire, he does his thing. He just seems a bit corporate-y for a, for a niche. What's the word? Indie guy of the community out on his own. He just already seems like he's part of the machine. I can see him fitting right in as a segment on DC and RC already. You know, he's just got that mind. So I'm not putting him in A tier, but you should watch some of his videos because he brings up some points like, oh, I didn't even know about this. And Jesse on Fires found it out and done his research and got a video out of it. So good for him. We move on. Weighing in. I'm putting it at D tier. I'm actually going to put weighing in at D tier. I'm done with him. I'm done with weighing in. I'm sorry. Like, they'll probably have a video about this, like, ha, this guy didn't even know what he's talking about. I was there when the rules were written. You know what I mean? Like, I'm done with him. I've heard, I used to listen to weighing in a lot. Like, I, I hear takes on that show, and I'm like, shut the fuck up out loud listen i used to listen to it and more and more that stopped me watching it was like you are so fucking wrong on this shut up we get it bellator's paying you good money with some of your takes that you have okay like jesus it's like their takes are made from a resentful position against the ufc you know what i mean and it's just like sometimes it's like you are so off on this like, let me hear. Oh, you know who would have a good chance against Hamzat Chimeyev? Oh, you know, uh, how about Douglas Lima? Yeah, and I'm like, oh, God, here we go again with their Bellator bias that they have. Like, except Bellator is trash. 1FC is second best. And Bellator's far behind 1FC. Okay? Like, if, if it was a 1FC bias, I'd maybe understand it because they are a good organization in some of the divisions. But man, the Bellator stuff and, and just some of their takes on other stuff is like they're so resentful. They just want to be against the stuff. They just want to diminish the skill level of UFC fighters sometimes. You know what I mean? I listen to their podcast sometimes. I'm like, oh, shut up, you dirty, filthy whores. Sorry. We move on to something else, which is, you know what? Let's get it done. BT Sport. We're putting it at D tier, yeah, because I stand by this. And I know that he did very well in terms of predictions of the year. But I'll, I'll say this out loud right now. And, and this might be all that's needed for BT Sport. Great production value. Good show put together. Consistent. They have uh, the Voldemort guy that looks good. Like, he's, he's doing good. He, he does a good job. He's very formal. He does good interviews and stuff like that. I'll just say this. Any company that's paid to cover MMA that hires Nick Pete is not a company I'm willing to get behind and watch MMA content for. That's all I'm going to say. He is. Ah, oh, what can I say? Down syndrome. He thought Paddy Pimlet. After re-watching, listen, I was like, damn, this is close. It should go Jared Gordon when I was watching it live. And I was angry at the result, but I was like, it's kind of close though. Let me re-watch it. Because um, of round two and then three on damage. But then when you re-watch it, like, Nick Pete re-watched Pimlet versus Gordon and thinks Paddy Pimlet won. I get it, yeah? They need to keep their connections with UK fighters strong and Nick Pete is their way of doing that. Nick Pete, you know what he is? Maybe I'm wrong on this, but I'm still, if they hiring him to cover MMA, get out. You aren't allowed above C tier. But, uh, you know, he's their idiot that they can just, uh, Nick Pete, take the fucking bullets from the fans. We need to keep our connection with Pimlet. You know what I mean? That's what he is. Like, oh, we can't. Bisping won't fucking sabotage his self-respect from the MMA fan base. This Voldemort guy won't do it either. He's not going to lose all self-respect from the MMA fan base. Uh, Nick P, we need you on a show to say Pimlet kind of won. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm putting it at D tier. But yeah, they're good. But like, fuck them. You know I mean, fuck the big corporate ones. We move on. Oh, God, I'm getting out of breath. Oh, Mexican martial arts. I'm putting them at B tier. But I want to say some things to Mexican mixed martial arts. Hey, first of all, yeah. I know he's watching. Okay. 
You want to be an MMA content uh, content creator of the year on YouTube? Hey, you ain't doing it from Rumble, okay? I see you moving over. What's wrong? Where's the content? He didn't do enough. I think Mexican martial arts, I'm going to be real with him, okay? Beanie wearing guy, respectable guy. I genuinely think he's a genius in the brain. And I'm going to be nice to him here for a little bit before inevitably smacking him down once again, okay? I think he's a genius, comedically, comedically, the way he formulates sentences to make them funny, like, I think he's actually got a gift of the gab, and I really respect that, okay, and I notice it in him, but I know YouTube might be messing him up, we need more from him, you know, I, I wanted to donate to him on a live stream, I gave him some money on a live stream, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't, maybe we should starve this fool out, you know what I mean? Maybe that's what we should start doing. I'm, I'm not going to make... I mean, he might be able to sue me if I say this. I don't want to make a giant, uh, like, cause to never donate money to him. But, <laughs> like, he needs to be hungry again. Okay, okay, maybe maybe he's full, okay? Maybe he's a little bit full on the whole donation thing. Because we need more content. I think he could have an MMA show. Like, he could really pull it off. He could do daily videos and he would pull it off covering everything. But... We just don't see the content out of him. And it's annoying because he could be a top le- He could be an A-tier guy. Well, you've got to watch his videos. But you just don't do them. And I'm, listen, I've taken a couple of days off around Christmas. I still streamed late in the day, but I still streamed. But, like, MMA, Me- Mexican mixed martial arts, like, you'd think, he's, you'd think he's a millionaire. I'm starting to get suspicious, Okay. Maybe someone's got a rich dad or something along those lines. You'd think he's a millionaire the way he's sitting sitting out letting the other guys have a chance. Like, you're at the bottom, dude, with the rest of us. Where's the hunger? Okay? Keep that shit off Rumble. Bring it to YouTube. Let's get some content out of him. I reckon he could actually do prediction videos, constant videos, streams, but he just don't... Get your fucking shit together, you waste of space. God, he's got talent, but it's just, he's not harnessing it. We move on to something else, which is Jack Slack. You know what? Again, I'm going to start trashing these guys a little bit more, yeah? Because I'm going to trash myself at the end of this, I promise. But I'm going to actually speed for through, speed through a few of these so I can trash myself and not make this a 50-minute video. Jack Slack, I'm putting you at C tier, yeah? You are a great mind for MMA. What the fuck else are you doing? Honestly. You work for CIA? You a fireman? What else? Do you, you Surgeon? Heart surgeon? By day? MMA podcaster by night? What el- Where's the content? You are a good mind for MMA. I listen to Jack Slack. Not very often, but the few times that I do, I'm like, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. Respectable. You know, he, like he's got a really... And, and people watch him. He gets tens of thousands of views every podcast. But why is there not? And this is what I don't understand about these people. I'm going to trash myself for this, but you've got to admit, I do above and beyond some of these guys. Where's the live streams? Honestly, where's the the prediction video? One podcast a week is your job. You're making money off that. Where's the hustle and drive? And he does sound like he's rich from hearing his voice. So maybe this is just a hobby to him and he's not even looking to make money out of it. Maybe he does come from a wealthy family, buy his accent, and and that's why he doesn't really drive for it. But where's the rest of the content? I I wish we could see Jack Slack videos every day. Every two days. At least. A couple times a week. We're getting one video a week from Jack Slack. One podcast. That's all I'm going to say. Get your shit in order. I'm getting pissed off by it. We move on. The Weasel. Oh my god, I should have drawn another A-tier person a bit sooner. But The Weasel, I'm putting him at A-tier. You've got to watch The Weasel. Um, Respectable content creator. I'm going to shit on him though. Because I have to, okay? I bet every one of these content creators wishes they were True Geordie because I'm shitting on all of them. Okay? Check the DMs. True Geordie DMs. Google Images. All you have to do. That's all I'm going to say. The Weasel. Great videos. To be honest, he's needed 
Don't you think? I think we can agree on that. The weasel is necessary in the MMA community, which is why I'm putting him at A tier. Because with, with the Who Really Won videos, first of all, uh, and Kalaev's front kicks, we're giving him medium shots, but we're not giving certain Jan Blachowicz leg kicks medium shots. That was a weird one, I'll be honest with you, but all good. Sometimes they're a bit off. But majority of the time, we need a weasel video to... I, I often leave a UFC event like, damn, I need the weasel to upload because I need to know what's going on with this scoring. You know what I mean? Like, I need a weasel video to help me understand this. So, the weasel is needed. He makes great content. He's in the know of the sport. He makes MMA news reactions. He has a podcast every week. Where's the fight, companions? You pursuing an MMA career or what? Because I ain't seeing the MMA career. What else are we doing? What else are we doing here? Where's the hunger? Where's the stream every day? Where's the fight companion? We do a bit more? Oh, you don't, I don't even need a face reveal. I'm not going to force him to do a face reveal. But where's the tier list? And I try and have fun with it. And, and these guys ain't having fun with it. They're just doing their fucking bare minimum and just scathing by every week. I need more from him. But I get it if he doesn't want to. I get it if he doesn't want to, but... I just feel like if we're not streaming every day, Weasel, and we're not doing Fight Companion, we could get a bit more of the content. Why are we, why are we starving out our audiences every week? It doesn't make no sense. We move on to someone else who is. Freestyle Albender. I'm putting him at B tier. Um, of all the fighters that are uh, not going to obviously put a lot into their channel, he does the best. I'm not even going to use this as a character assassination of Israel Adesanya because there's a lot of ever, uh, a lot of stuff to do there. Like, you can say a lot about Israel Adesanya, you know what I mean? But we're just going to do it based on the content of the channel. Very high class production value. He knows what he was doing, you know what I mean? Like, of all the fighters that have started MMA YouTube channels, like, he does better MMA videos than Bisping, and Bisping's one job is to do the MMA videos. And, and and Israel Adesanya was, until recently, a dominant middleweight world champion. You know what I mean? So, like, he does fight companions. And those are always a part of the week. You know what I mean? When there's big fights on, you're like, oh, we'll see how Adesanya reacted to him. So, I respect Israel Adesanya's content. I also respect that he used his YouTube channel's audience to, like, do interviews with Kai Kara France and other people that were... Uh, uh, there was other people. I can't... I've drawn a blank. Dan, I mean, everyone knows who Dan Hooker is, but he's still putting these guys on from his gym. Carlos Allberg, he did an interview with. There's the name. Um, so I respect what he's doing with his YouTube channel. I'll put him at B tier. It's not an A tier because it's not his job and he, he's not doing MMA news reactions. He's just basically covering the big pay-per-view fights and doing his own content on there for him more than just around MMA in general. So um, we're putting him at B tier though. There you go. We move on to something else, which is the schmo. I've gone off him. Can't watch him. Don't know about anyone else. Can't watch him anymore. That's all I'm going to say. Can't watch him. Gone off him. I'm on a no schmo spree. Some interviews, yeah. Uh, chicken feet with Alex Pereira. I'll tune in. But. There's almost a point to it now where we're like, we get your weird at the interview. I'm going to get some dislikes for this because there's, there's an army of Schmo fans that are going to not like this. I just think it's a bit drawn out now. Any, anyone else watch the Schmo interview and you're like, oh, God, he's doing his Schmo thing again. Like, can we do the Schmo thing and ask interesting questions? Oh, that'd be great. I'll put you at C tier. I'll put you maybe at B tier. But the Schmo act is not an excuse to be shit at being a journalist and be a shit interviewer. That's all I'm going to say about the schmo. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. I get it, Helen Yee had surgery to remove her boobs. You're a bit depressed right now because you've committed and then the boobs have gone. And that's what you committed for. Okay? But I get it. But we need to bring our fucking energy back up. Okay? There's a silver lining. Maybe she gets the boobs put back in. Maybe. We need to ask some better questions. We need to ask some better questions here. Okay? Because we're getting like, how are we doing? There's only so many answers a guy can give. And it was at first, it was like, oh my God, how's this fighter going to react to the schmo doing his schmo thing in front of them? That was the thing. But now that all of them have reacted to him and are used to him, it's like, how's fight week? It's a big fight. What do you think? You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. 
give us a more intricate question like you're behind the scenes with these guys we've got to get a bit more intricacy with that smoke schmo character i'm going off of it i ain't watching it anymore you know what i mean we move on also this one oh god that snap actually hurt my middle finger um also you were at fucking jake paul or logan paul that some kind of uh, youtube boxing event when there was a ufc 280 on or something like that you weren't even there some i, I think it was find the, find the timing of this when there was a big ufc pay-per-view and also a big youtube boxing event he literally covered the youtube boxing over like ufc 279 i think it was find what the youtube boxing event was I genuinely think he went to Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva or something like that instead of the UFC pay-per-view. You're in it for the money, not the MMA. Fuck your shit up, bitch. We moving on. Dan Hardy. Oh, my God. I shouldn't have saved this. I'm getting conscious of the time. I, I shouldn't have saved this. Uh, hey. Hey, the numbers speak for themselves. You want to make money on MMA? Don't listen to Hardy. All I'm going to say, don't listen to him, okay, because you'll lose your money, okay, and also, your YouTube channel, and I can't stress this enough, I'm going to be hard on myself for this, Dan Hardy, your YouTube channel is your job right now, a couple fight breakdowns when a pay-per-view is coming up, maybe a full card breakdown once a week, what else are we getting? Do I have to insult you again to get content out of you? What else are we doing? I might actually have to insult Mark Goddard again just so we can get a fucking video out of Dan Hardy because no effort. This That's all you do. The boxing match, let's be real, it's been three years. It ain't happening. We've heard about the boxing match for three straight years. It doesn't seem like it's happening. Okay, give it up. All right? Mr. Ego Death. Or I'll have to insult Mark Goddard again and get a fucking two-hour video out of you. Not a f big MMA news thing happens. We don't get a video out of you. Me insulting Mark Goddard. Oh, two hours to spare all of a sudden. Where's the content at? Also, he is a really good analyst, though. So I, I respect Dan Hardy, which is why I'm not going to put him in the detail or anything like that. But like Dan Hardy's top of C tier here. Um, I'll just put Aljo here and, and Dan Hardy here. He's at the top of C tier. Um, just a bit more effort, we put him at B tier. Like, even though he didn't get predictions right, you know, you can just get predictions wrong is how it is. But, um, he does give really good breakdowns when he does them. When he does the breakdowns, he gives a really insightful, good breakdowns, good production quality. It's amazing. But, fuck Dan Hardy is, is the end result of this. We move on. DC, putting him at C tier. Um, again, fighter... Give us the generic take. You're not going to hear many hot takes from DC or anything like that. But he'll give you the generic take in DC fashion. And to be honest, do more videos with Ben Askren and, and a different fighter on the show other than DC for DC and RC. I've got to put it above DC and RC. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, put more uh, fighters on the channel. More people on the channel. Get some better interviews going and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I'll respect it more. But yeah, DC... I watch him quite a bit when it comes to like the fight week interviews because it's like it's nice seeing the fighters interact with DC because they're kind of fans of him. You know what I mean? That's that's the sort of advantage that a former fighter has in the scene is that the fighters themselves respect them and actually like will be challenged by their questions and be in awe of them for interviews and stuff like that. So it gets a better side of the fighters. So respect to DC, good content, consistent content, whatever. We move on. Mod your head. He makes cartoons, so I'm just going to put him at A tier, yeah. But I am going off of him a little bit. Like, they're not as popping as they used to be. But I think I had him at S tier before. But you know what? He makes cartoons for MMA. No one's doing that. No one's doing it to that level. Someone, I think, what was it? Tommy Toehold used to do that, making the cartoons. But it was like, like terrible South Park style cartoons, essentially. He's making full-on cartoons like a weekly episode or two. I respect the the level of effort he puts in just to get that weekly video out. So respect to Modger Head for the light he's putting in the work. He's doing cartoons for MMA. Although I don't really watch him anymore because I think they are getting a bit dry. Um, yeah, 
respect to Mojahead. It's just I'm losing interest in it a little bit. And I think we all are. And I think the view numbers show that a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. Put Mojahead at 8 here. Now it's time to crown the winner. <laughs> Who the fuck are they? Anyway. Um, it's the MMA guru. I actually do think... Uh, who picked Alex Pereira to win? Who picked Leon Edwards to win? Who's doing tier lists of the best MMA content creators of all time? Who's giving you emotional fucking reactions? Having meltdowns about things. Live fight companions for the fight cards. Putting the hours in. Streams every day. Not so much recently, but we're going to get back to it once the fights come back again. Streaming every day. Members streams sporadic recently. Not as much every day, but either way. Okay? Okay content regular not recently but before that very regular content we're doing press conference reactions impressions okay the clip channels are putting out more content than some of these guys on this tier list are on their main channels is all i'm gonna say second channel weekly content when the fights are around multiple times a week i'm actually out hustling these guys i am i'm putting in more effort i'm doing better what I will say is this. I am the best MMA content creator on YouTube right now. And I have done that by simply out hustling and doing more and being more intricate with my content than the others. I don't deserve S tier this year. I'm going to put myself at A tier. I need to do more. And I'm not just saying that to, oh my god, he's, be, he's being David Goggins. You know what I mean? Like, no, I'm not trying to do some David Goggins shit. Reality is, I can't fucking sleep. I, like, I, and it's an excuse. Like, I'm being a bit of a Darren Till here. I can sleep, and I do sleep often. Like, I sleep for eight hours every night, at least. But it literally takes me, like, two fucking hours to get to sleep. Like, two and a half hours, sometimes three hours, I'm just laying there. I can't sleep. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to maybe see a doctor at some point if I, if I can't fix it with, like, other style and, and lifestyle changes and shit like that. But the fact is, that's the reason. That's a big reason. But I need to do more, okay? I need to do more. I need to stream more. Once a day is not enough as a standard. I need to do once a day for UK time, once a day for American time. That's what I need to do. Two hours each at least I need to do. Members stream needs to be every day of the week and it's not. It's all over the place. And it's not good enough. I'm doing like two or three sometimes. And then saying, oh, I'll do it on Saturday and I'm never doing it. Like it's, it's annoying. I'm annoying myself a lot. I should have had this tier list out on Christmas. It's now, 27th. Second channel, I've done one video over the past week. I'm streaming at like 4 a.m. UK time, just because my sleep's messing me up that bad. But 4 a.m. UK time, just not. Why? I have like. I just. I can't. I don't know what is with my fucking brain. I need to be streaming earlier, more, different moments of the day for different time zones. I need to do more content. I don't know what it is. I just don't do it. And I don't do enough. And I'm doing more than everyone else, which is crazy. I'm doing more than the weasel with the fight companions and the streams that I do and all of the content that I do as well. More than Ariel, more than Mojet. Well, Mojet is a cartoonist, so I don't know how much effort he puts in. But I'm doing more than everyone on this fucking tier list. I truly believe I am. And I'm open to arguments of, of I'm not doing more than them in terms of hours put in. But I'm not doing enough. I'm genuinely not doing enough and it pisses me off. I need to be streaming UK time. I need to put out a community post once a week and be able to follow a, hey, UK time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'm going to be live that day, every every day at that time. And then midnight to 2 a.m. I'm live again for the American audience. But I, I don't do it because I know I can't commit to it. I don't know what it is. I can't put myself S tier and give myself a crown. I can't. Can't do it. I need to put more content out. But it takes me ages to do the content. And I just have a fucking mental fucking freeze. Where I just don't do it. And it annoys me. 
Like one video a day isn't good enough. Well, like I, I literally get to a point where, listen, I think about the content a lot more than I actually do the content. So it's not just this, but there'll be like multiple days in a row during like intense fight weeks where I've done a video that took me half an hour to make and upload. And then I stream for an hour and a half and do a members stream. That's like four hours of work, three hours of work. I can't count. Like, that's not enough. You know what I mean? Like, I came from working at the start. I was doing this on top of, like, a nine-hour day of work. And now I've got into this routine, and my sleep is a massive thing. Because genuinely, to get eight hours of sleep, it takes me 13 hours of the day almost. Like, waking up is terrible as well for me. But, like, it's fucking crazy. So I need to get some shit under control with my sleep, especially. I need to put more effort into the content. Because I'm not doing enough. Not doing enough at all. And also, next year, I need to up the production value a bit at least. I'm hoping to up the production value around New Year's. Early into the next year. But hopefully I need to move out of this fucking shed. Finally. In the early quarter of next year. At the end of the first quarter, maybe who knows. But I need to move out and actually get like a studio going. Because I'm taking the piss at this point. Because people are donating me money. And they're saying you deserve it. And I'm like, I've done fucking three hours of work today. Why am I getting a $50 donation? I don't know. So although I think my videos are the fucking best. And I, str- and I do more than everyone else on this fucking list. Uh, to my own brain. Uh, like, you know what I mean? I, I'm taking the piss. I have everyone giving me money. I don't deserve the amount I make on YouTube. People are very generous and say, I des- oh, you deserve this, man. I, I, I need to do more to feel morally okay with earning the amount I earn on YouTube. And even being able to do this as a living. You know what I mean? That's such a fucking blessing. I need to put more effort in because I've been blessed rather than take time off because i've been blessed it's whatever anyway like and subscribe thank you for watching i don't deserve the s tier goodbye